now we are going to move to the next session of our event, uh, which will be looking um, uh, into presenting the outcomes of the MUSA project. In the last three years and a half of its existence, uh, the MUSA project managed to combine in a quite unique manner more than 60 IT, digital and transversal competencies in order to describe four new job roles for museum professionals and to create and deliver a specialized training course for each of them. Dr. Achilles Camillas and Dr. Spiros Borotis, who is a project manager at DAISY Research Group of the Hellenic Open University, will give us a short overview of uh, this exciting journey that lasted more than three years. Achilles Spiros, the floor is yours. Okay, I hope you can see my screen. Please confirm. Yes, we see it. Fine. Thank you. Uh, so I will try uh, in 10 minutes to guide you through a project that lasted three and a half years, not an easy task. And uh, being a university professor, I'm not good at being brief, but I will do my, my best for you. Um, to prepare this presentation, uh, I was the I'm the coordinator of MUSA project and uh, Dr. Spiros Borotis is the project manager of MUSA project. So we combined our experience to tell you what this was about. Uh, we, as I said in my opening, uh, in my welcome speech, uh, we addressed uh, directly the shortage of digital and transferable skills uh, in the museum sector. This had been identified in previous projects. Uh, we also did uh, a proof of concept uh, work, validation work in the beginning of this project uh, to make sure that our findings were still valid and uh, our uh, work and the outputs of this project benefited uh, directly the museum professionals uh, or people who would like to be museum professionals like uh, students and currently unemployed but also the museums themselves as organizations. The main outcomes of the project, uh, you will hear in detail about them in the following presentation, so I'm just going to list them here. It was a list of uh, digital and transversal competencies for the museum professionals, uh, a new, uh, four new job role profiles that we have identified, uh, a modular VET curriculum that we designed for each of these uh, profiles, a three-stage three training courses that we developed for uh, each of those profiles using uh, the digital uh, resources that we developed in the project, a MOOC platform and uh, an e-learning platform that we also developed to support the training. Uh, the training provided a unique combination of uh, IT competencies uh, is, uh, based on the ECF standard, digital competencies based on the DigiCom standard and uh, transversal competencies. And finally, uh, we are happy to see that there, was a, there is a community of practice that formed around NUSA. Uh, made up of, from uh, composed of the people who attended the courses, though, though you also who attend this conference, and we hope that this community will stay alive beyond the end of the project and will do our best. I have to say here that we will continue supporting the platforms. We will, will continue offering the MOOC and the trainings in different ways. So uh, we will try to support this community as much as possible. Uh, we used many European instruments to ensure that our uh, Outcomes were of high quality, but also will be recognized that it would be transferable uh, to various uh, national frameworks. And um, then uh, uh, these are the four job role profiles that we came up with. And uh, in the next presentation, you will uh, see, uh, hear more about them in more detail. Uh, digital strategy manager, digital curation, uh, collections curator, interactive experience developer, and online community manager. These are sort of uh, evolutions of uh, existing profiles with uh, uh, digital competencies. The first stage of the project produced two important outcomes. One is this, and both of them are, uh, can be downloaded from the MUSA website. Uh, you can see the MUSA website uh, address at the bottom of uh, each slide of my presentation. Uh, one is the report Museum Professionals in the Digital Era that uh, identifies the fundamental digital and transferable competencies needed by museum professionals in order to survive in the uh, transformed, uh, digitally transformed museum sector. 
and the other one is Museum of the Future, a collection of uh, interviews and uh, opinions and reflections from the directors of 10 international museums. Very interesting, both of them. I recommend them uh, to you. Uh, the core of the project was to uh, design and deliver uh, the training. Uh, our approach was that uh, we uh, decided to do the training in two stages. The first stage, uh, uh, in the first stage, we designed and developed the MOOC, Massive Online Open Course, which was open, as it says, which was common for all the four profiles and uh, which was delivered in the beginning. And then there were specialization courses for each of the, each one for each of the four uh, profiles. Uh, at the end of each specialization course, there was uh, a workplace uh, learning uh, phase. Uh, what we offer in this training, um, the MOOC, as I said, was common for the four profiles. The title was uh, in Essential Digital and Transversal Competencies for Museum Professionals. And from this, you understand more or less the content. It uh, lasted eight weeks and uh, uh, required about 80 hours of, uh, of learning. We taught 22 competencies from uh, ECF. ECF is the European standard for uh, digital competencies for IIT professionals and Digicom. This is the European framework for digital competencies for the average citizen and also 20, 21st century skills. Then we offered the specialization courses. As I said, one course for each job role combined e-learning, face-to-face training, and workplace learning. In total, 42 competencies taught, originating from the three domains as above, and for a duration of uh, six months, the two last of which contained the workplace learning. Uh, the contents of the MOOC, uh, just to get an idea, I'm not going to go into detail, you will hear about them later. You see it's structured on uh, a weekly basis. On each week, there are uh, there is a main competence coming from ECF, a main IIT competence, and then there are, this is complemented by competences coming from Digicom and transversal competences. Um, and these are the uh, contents of the specialization course. The specialization course lasted more than the MOOC, lasted in total 24 weeks. Uh, and in each week, there is also a combination of competences taught to different uh, profiles. Um, now, we did all this through our MOOC uh, platform that uh, we developed uh, in uh, our research group, in the DAISY research group. This is the um, website of the platform, uh, the web address, if you want to take a look. Uh, there are other MOOCs as well. Moosa MOOC is prominent among them. The welcome screen, uh, this was based on Moodle. We tried to do our best to create uh, user-friendly and uh, at the same time, uh, um, well working and uh, useful environment. Um, there are different kinds of uh, uh, learning material, digital learning material included, like videos, like uh, presentations with voiceover and so on, all of this translated. And also there are quizzes at the end of each, uh, of each unit. Uh, then uh, here are some uh, brief statistics about the MOOC. Uh, we uh, had about, uh, uh, we had more than 5,000 expressions of interest to register. In the end, 3,800 people enrolled uh, and uh, 1,370 people successfully finished the group, uh, finished the MOOC. Uh, from the list to the left, uh, on the left, you can see that they came from many countries around the world, while the project was implemented in only three countries, Italy, Greece, and Portugal, and Belgium was the uh, represented uh, by CAE and was responsible mostly for the dissemination. Uh, however, we managed to uh, attract attention from all over the world, literally, as you can see here. And also another figure that uh, we like so much is that uh, the participation of women was really strong in this uh, training. The specialization courses were offered through a different but similar platform to the MOOC. Uh, this is an e-learning platform. There is a uh, separate course, a distinct course for each profile. So uh, people, uh, some of the, of the MOOC graduates, um, uh, those who were selected had to enroll in one of these profiles and follow the training. The um, out, uh, outline and the structure was uh, similar to the MOOC, but here we had also face-to-face -face, uh, training sessions. It was, let's say, more, uh, more a blended learning. And at the end, there were practical assignments uh, that uh, they um, 
trainees had to go through and then they were these were evaluated by the tutors. Uh, we had about we had 120 candidates for the workplace learning and the specialization courses. The workplace learning was at the end of the specialization course. About 80% of them were already working in museums. The rest were not working in museums or were unemployed. Here you see a distribution uh, of the workplace learning sites in the three countries. We were constrained by the project um, framework that uh, piloting had to take place only in the three countries. Um, an overview here that shows the effort of uh, learning. Uh, we taught uh, in total 64 competencies coming from the three frameworks. 80 hours were allocated in the MOOC, 140 to 160 hours were allocated to the specialization course uh, online, and then they were complemented by 24 hours face to face and 205 hours of workplace learning, leading in total to a number of more than uh, 450 hours training per profile. Uh, this entailed a lot of uh, design and development. We taught more than about 600 learning outcomes in this whole process. They were distributed in the three uh, frameworks. Um, as you see, as you understand, uh, the digital uh, competencies had the big share among them. Uh, and uh, this middle, the, the table in the middle shows how this uh, competencies are allocated in the uh, Bloom taxonomy levels and you see that we focus more on the first levels of the Bloom taxonomy that is this means that we are teaching essential competencies let's say of uh, to, to, to the trainees. Uh, the survey the acceptance survey that we did at the end of uh, the training was really high really high for us uh, um, the results were really high. As we see, most of the learners uh, rated, uh, most of the questions were rated uh, for uh, with over 80% of satisfaction, and this is uh, this makes us very very happy. Uh, and um, finally, as a recognition of the effort we put in this project, uh, Musa has been included in the Digicom User Guide as one of the 38 existing inspiring practices of Digicom implementations. And then it has been selected out of this 38. Now nine of these practices have been selected to appear in a new guide that the uh, European Commission is preparing and MUSA is one of them uh, because we are uh, one of the few projects that brings Digicom into practice and with a strong link to the labor market. I'd like to thank deeply from my heart uh, my, the team of Hellenic Open University of DAISY Research. You can see their names here who participated in this project and you will see some of them presenting later, and also the partners, uh, the partners without whom this project would not have been feasible. We had, a, as I said, an exciting journey, very fruitful, very creative, and we are looking uh, with ambition and with hope into the future, into exploiting the results of Musa. Thank you very much. Thank you, Achilles, uh, for your presentation. Spiros, do you want to add something on that? Um, or should we continue with, uh, with our next speaker? Yeah, I would like also to thank um, uh, everybody for uh, the participation both to this conference and especially to the people that uh, managed uh, to attend um, the MOOC. We speak, we speak about a huge database of people. Um, the results uh, so far are very promising. Um, although this project was a pilot uh, project and um, we are taking uh, all the evaluation um, input uh, into account so as uh, to improve uh, in the near future. Thank you. Natalie, the floor is, uh, is yours. Thank you, Spiros. So one of the goals of the Musa research was to identify new emerging job profiles in the museum sector by capitalizing on the findings of the EQ Cult uh, Skills Project that was implemented a couple of years ago. Antonia Silvaggi from Melting Pro will present four emerging job profiles in the museum sector as identified by the project. 
Antonia is a researcher, trainer and project manager of international cooperation projects in the field of audience development, storytelling and creative entrepreneurship. She is head of training at Melting Pro, a consultancy organization based in Rome, and she is active uh, and the Melting Pro is active in the field of culture. Antonia, the word is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie, and thank you for all uh, the partners and the people uh, connected. Uh, so can you hear me well? We can hear you very well. Okay, great. So I'll just share my screen. So good morning. Uh, as Natalie said, I'm Antonia Silvaggi. I represent uh, Melting Pro the partner in charge of the Musa research that has been carried out in the three countries involved in the consortium, Portugal, Italy, Greece, in December 2016 and March 2017, so quite some time ago now. And uh, the results were um, uh, useful to inform the design of the following training, as Achilles uh, pointed out. And uh, uh, I also would like to take this occasion to uh, thank all the partners involved in the research because uh, without them, uh, it would have not been possible because we did a lot of focus groups, uh, interviews. Uh, so there was a lot of uh, data to manage. So as uh, Natalie said uh, in my presentation today, I will, uh, I will introduce you to the emerging but should they be still emerging uh, job profiles today that were outlined by the Musa research? And uh, so far, uh, we have already trained uh, uh, some professionals across the three countries uh, in these uh, uh, job role profiles. So as you are all aware, <laughs> because we are having this conference online today connected from our homes, in recent years, museums have been exposed to the influence of digital technologies and challenges of, of economic, social, environmental transformation. With no doubt, to continue to be relevant in today's society, museums need to seize the opportunities that technology offers to extend the means of pursuing their central purposes and serving their communities. So how to do that? So one way is to invest in human capital, as Musa as the project Musa has done. So now I'm going to just share with you um, the job role profiles uh, because one of the goals of the Musa research was actually to identify which were these emerging job profiles. And the research provided useful insight uh, on which digital and transferable or uh, what are uh, maybe uh, most known as uh, soft skills need to be developed by museum professionals to help them face current and future challenges. So, um, thanks to the Musa research, we managed to describe these uh, job role pro profiles in very detail. Uh, but, of course, we only have 10 minutes, so I, I can't go much uh, in depth. So I'm just pointing out, as Achille said, that all the information is available on our Musa website. So in order of priority, uh, the majority of the response of, of our research, uh, maybe with some slight differences uh, uh, in some of the countries, but argued that the most important role profiles that museums should invest in when upskilling their staff was the digital strategy manner, manager to support the museum in thriving in the digital environment. And this, I mean, this job role profiles that maybe uh, it's like a, a kind of a superhero, actually all of them sound like uh, kind of superheroes, but are very important for a museum to um, thrive in the digital environment in line with their overall museum strategy. Then we have the digital collection curator, which is specialized in preserving and managing also born digital materials. It develops online and offline exhibitions and content for other departments. 
And uh, uh, this was of primary importance because uh, the research also said that digitization of collections is the primary step for a museum to develop their digital strategy. Then we have the digital interactive experience developer specialized in designing, developing, and implementing, implementing innovative and interactive experiences for all types of visitors. And then uh, we have the online community major, manager, which is vital for all museum aiming to invest in developing and engaging diverse audiences online. And this role profile should be integrated into the institutional structure. So our research showed that there are uh, digital skills like programming, uh, strategic and business, and business planning skills uh, that are uh, essentials to all job profiles, but also soft skills are very important, like uh, creativity, leadership, active listening, and team working. So when we carried out the research uh, back in uh, 2016, uh, the beginning of uh, 2017, the role profiles initiated the interesting debates among the professional community involved in the research. So some experts, for example, said where a digital strategy manager would fit in a museum organizational chart, whether this figure should be internal or external. According to some of the respondents, some skills such as programming, software development, or infrastructure installation were identified as external skills with no consequences uh, to the digital strategy. Currently, still some of these roles like the digital strategy manager or the digital interactive experience developer are often carried out by external collaborators. Some role profiles have been considered even too advanced, um, but also some experts argue the importance that they will be eventually recognized. In fact, I would like to quote uh, um, this from an interview from the Museums of the Future publication that 20 years ago, even audio video section was unthinkable simply because we didn't feel the need. So uh, we must say that a general sense of dis discouragement among the responses, respondents uh, was detecti detected. As much more investment in digital skills training is required at policy level. And this is, I think I echo also what Julia was saying. Um, because also it should be borne in mind that in, at that time, at least in Greece, Italy and Portugal, only the biggest museum could afford to appoint a person in charge of a digital strategy that was a part of their museum internal organization. But all these uh, superheroes that I described so far, they should be seen um, in the functions and competencies. They should be embedded in the context of a teamwork. They should have good knowledge of how museum works and all the museum staff should be encouraged to increase their digital confidence. So this means developing digital skills for the whole staff of a museum, regardless of their role profile. And this is also revealed by recent research in the UK by Ross Perry. Museums are hiring technical staff and at the same time shifting towards a democratization of digital skills and digital confidence across the whole museum workforce. So finally, uh, although MUSA research focused on emerging job profiles, and uh, I'm echoing uh, um, Tara, what she said at the beginning, um, the underpinning theme is the need for a mental shift, a mental change, so that the digital element can become an integral part of the approach from the outset. So, Although it's difficult to make predictions as to what the future holds for museum, further digital and social innovation are certainly in store. Regardless of the resources, uh, resources available, all museums can become agents of change. They need to acquire an awareness of their potential and be equipped with the appropriate skill set for responding to the ever-changing needs of society. We trust that the importance of the profiles described in MUSA will potentially be recognized not only by the sector, but also a policy level.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Antonia. Thank you. Um, indeed, uh, it takes a mental shift that that we need, and I have. We have all of us might have many questions to to ask you now, but uh, we'll keep the questions and answer session um, after we have finished with all the presentations. Uh, but for the attendees, you can already start asking your questions at the, at the Q&A section. We will be taking them afterwards. Uh, we will also uh, collect the presentations and send you um, in the email communication uh, after the webinar is finished, because many of you have been asking for that as well. Our next speaker um, will present the methodology partners of Musa Consortium had to follow in order to design uh, the educational material for the Musa courses in a technically and scientifically correct way. Panayota Polymeropoulou is a senior mm -hmm. researcher and member of the DAISY Research Group of the Hellenic Open University, and she will take us through the project methodology. Panayota works in EU projects related to culture and her professional activity focuses on museology, digital cultural heritage, virtual archaeology, e-learning and ICT skills in culture. Panayota, the floor is yours. Uh, hello, Natalie. Hello to everyone. Um, thank you all for being here with us today. Uh, okay, let me share my screen. Okay, is it okay? Can you see it? That's perfect. Okay, um, after all this um, explanation uh, from Achilles about the, uh, the overview of the MUSE project and also the analysis that we had uh, held and contacted uh, within the project, uh, finding what would be the full pr uh, project uh, raw profiles. Uh, I'm going to show you the methodology that we followed uh, as consortium in order to design and develop the VET curriculum. Um, so, for those who have been um, already familiar with uh, design, developing curricula, uh, and are aware of uh, the so-called ADI model, we used this, uh, this model in our uh, methodology in order to design and develop our own uh, MUSA courses, uh, the MOOC course, and also the specialization courses. Uh, the ADI model, as you can see, stands for analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. And in the uh, next uh, slide, uh, you will see the key points in each phase. So, so um, how we work together in order to uh, design and develop uh, the courses. Uh, so now in these slides, you see the three different roles that the partners had to take. Uh, from one part, the first part is the, the authoring. So partners had the role to um, develop the design and develop the content of the, of the educational material, so to be the authors of this material. Then we had the technical reviewer, who was the, the role of the, usually the Hellenic Open University, to correct the tables that I will show you in the following slides, uh, that the author had to fill in. Last, it was a very valuable role, uh, that of the scientific reviewer, who had to validate actually what has been already technically reviewed. So what means the analysis phase from the ADI model? First of all, we had to define what was the purpose of the training and for whom we would develop the, these education materials. So we had to set the basic um, learning objectives to know the learner's profile. And for that reason, the previous um, uh, presentation of Antonia explained us how we work together in order to define this. Uh, also valuable at this time, for the analysis uh, phase was to uh, set uh, how many hours also the course would be uh, available. Another thing is for the analysis phase that the learner's background was important for us also to know, to know what would be uh, probably their previous knowledge or what kind of skills would need. 
uh, afterwards, after the design, uh, the analysis phase comes the design phase. Um, so here we had to be more detailed, to go in depth and actually design the education material. And uh, since we have specific modules uh, that corresponded to specific competencies, digital and transferable, the so-called 21st century that the learners had to know, we go with um, uh, dividing the modules in units, which were actually the, the learning activities. Now, based, with the, uh, based on the education strategy that we had to uh, apply for our course, meaning what kind of videos would select or would make, what kind of presentations we would provide to the audience, then we had to um, actually design the learning outcomes for each unit in each mo uh, module. And this is very important uh, concerning the learning outcomes, and I will explain later on how we did that. Based on the design of the learning outcomes, then we had to design the assessment objects, which are, were actually quizzes like multiple choice quizzes uh, for MOOC and um, quizzes um, and practical assignments from the specialization courses. Here in this uh, flowchart, you may see the uh, multiple and continuous revisions that we made between authors, technical reviewers and scientific reviewers in order to, at the end, to develop the content. But what kind of learning objects did we um, design and develop at the end? So for one hand, we had to uh, define what would be the core material, the, um, uh, the material, the education material that the learners had, uh, they were obliged, let's say, to study, to view, to read, and this was the core one. Then, additionally, we provided extra material in order to help learners to uh, go into depth or for further reading. The collaboration part was uh, concerning uh, certain topics or subjects for um, discussions, for exchanging ideas in the fora, in the platform. So in the platform, apart from the announcements, the general announcements, let's say, we had specific uh, module related forum in each module. Then uh, we have, as you see, the assessment uh, learning objects, meaning that based on the learning outcomes that we had already defined, we had also to develop the quizzes and the practical assignments. So how we did it, how we uh, actually managed to go with the learning outcomes. Here we, you may see uh, the Bloom's taxonomy that Achilles uh, mentioned in the previous um, presentation. What is about the Bloom's taxonomy? This is very uh, well known with, the, with those who are dealing with uh, VET curricula. So you may see in the purple uh, cycle, you may see the different levels of um, knowledge starting with uh, the knowledge and then go with uh, the more advanced level, let's say progressively from the knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation would be the, the three last uh, parts, the, the three last levels as the more advanced knowledge for more uh, advanced experienced uh, learners. In the purple, in the um, uh, orange one, you can see the verbs that correspond to the specific level. And then in the green one, you can see what kind of uh, products, let's say, the students, the learner will be able to provide. Now, about uh, uh, concerning the development phase, you see that all authors and tutors, uh, uh, as well technicians, collaborated in order to make sure that the content will be finalized. Then the Hellenic Open University set the platform uh, and uploaded all the final content and uh, also a user manual, so to facilitate the user to navigate in the platform. Then the final step was that the module was going live in the platform. Now, concerning the RD model, as you saw previously, one, uh, uh, one step uh, was the implementation phase. So what means the implementation phase? Actually, uh, when we had uh, almost ready the content, that we had to make uh, the announcement for calling, inviting all people to um, participate in the MOOC and in specialization courses. So before going live the modules, the partnership had to test and uh, for the uh, module that were already finished and uploaded in the platform to do a fine and a, a testing, let's say, for any improvements. 
and then um, implement these changes. So um, the last part of the ADI model is the evaluation phase. So in the project, we uh, had to go with uh, uh, formative and summative uh, evaluations. Um, the format is, is of uh, low interest, let's say, because actually it's used by instructors in order to do some uh, improvements in the platform, for example. But the summative evaluation is of high interest, let's say, because actually it evaluates what the learner has learned and to measure the effectiveness of the whole course. Now, uh, here you may see some examples of the tables that the authors had to fill in. You can see multiple uh, fields uh, concerning the first one would be the module description. And then uh, according to the description of the module, we had to divide each module in separate uh, units. Then for the design of the learning outcomes, you may see uh, according to the Bloom's, Bloom's taxonomy, um, starting with the knowledge and comprehension level being the very, uh, the very um, let's say basic uh, uh, level of knowledge and then going progressively uh, in an escalation of levels going to the synthesis and evaluation. Now, uh, for, each, uh, for each video, for each presentation that we made, we had previously uh, in the design phase to fill in all these tables. Um, and according to the learning outcomes, as uh, I uh, show you uh, previously, we had also to design uh, the quizzes, the multiple choice quizzes, uh, uh, actually um, uh, selecting uh, yes or no uh, answers, true or false, or multiple, uh, multiple choice questions for the MOOC and the specialization courses. While in the specialization course, sorry, uh, we had also to design um, an extra table which was uh, concerning the practical assignment. Now, uh, what kind of uh, learning materials did we uh, develop? Actually, it was self-reduced material, as you have, some of you have already seen in the platform. So we had to shoot some videos and uh, prepare interviews, lectures, and also some um, open resource uh, uh, material like uh, book chapters, articles, uh, and presentations that, the, presentations that the, the learner will be able to download uh, in his computer. <clears throat> so finally, um, what would be the next action for MUSE project concerning uh, the training material? Uh, we have collected all the feedback that we receive from both tutors and learners from the MOOC and the specialization courses. And uh, we will uh, actually um, implement these uh, revisions, making sure that the, at the end we will provide a fine-tuning education material. Thank you very much. Hopefully in the time frame of 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Panagiotta. I know it's very difficult to, to, to be so concise uh, uh, and, and try to, to pass over every, the extremely, extreme amount of work that uh, all the partners have been putting into, into this project in 10 minutes. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for, uh, for it. Uh, we will be uh, moving forward. Uh, um, the Musa MOOC, a massive open online course, attracted over 5,000 learners from around the globe. I'm happy now to give the word to Paula menino Homem uh, from the University of Porto, who coordinated the Musa MOOC to give us more insights. Paula is Assistant Professor, Director of the Museum Studies MA Program and Director of the Conservation and Restoration Lab. Her research interests include risk management, preventive conservation, integrated and sustainable protection of cultural heritage and its multi-supportive communication, especially in museum contexts. Paula, we are listening to you attentively. So good morning, everybody. For those who worked together, uh, a very deep thank you. And for those who are participating also. So I will share my screen.
So can you see it? Yes, we can see it, Paula. So uh, I will talk about the, the MOOC, the, the, the first phase educational program that uh, MOOSA project uh, produced and delivered, the essential digital skills for museum professionals. I will try to do it in brief. So to start with our targets, of course, as has been mentioned, we, we target all the museum community those uh, who were already professionals, those who wanted to be ones, employed, unemployed, and in general terms we wanted to support them in order to, to, for them to successfully manage the emerging digital challenges that we are facing by acquiring career adaptive competences and doing so they would be able to leverage the sustainable development of institutions and for our well-being of society. More specifically, we wanted to offer a set of training modules in a very friendly environment and in a massive way and in a format uh, as open educational resources. We wanted to group the basic common competences already considered important for the four job role profiles that we have been mentioned previously and the MOOC constituted a first level like a taster and a feeder for a more complex and deeper program, later program in, uh, in the format of four specialization courses has been mentioned. In terms of targets, we wanted to produce 22 training models of two big different categories. One related to the transversal, uh, 21st century competences and two big categories related to digital has been mentioned uh, nine considering the competences devoted to citizens and eight considering the, the competences devoted to professionals so in deep uh, those competences already been identified and uh, let's see what we have reached in fact uh, we had uh, a lot of people uh, manifesting uh, their interest, so they registered. We had 5,291 uh, person. Hundreds of them did not consent to have their information used for reports, so we will not consider it. But we were, man, we, we were able to, to identify nine countries. So we, uh, in fact, um, extended our, our uh, training course to those uh, around the world, around the globe. Of course, many of them were uh, concentrating on the, the countries that are part of the consortium. But you can see, I imagine you, you see your country somewhere <laughs> over this table because we reach all the continents we can have a better perception if we look at the map and for instance we can go from canada to new zealand that uh, of course it was the first idea the first impulse everybody or most or many people registered uh, but at, it, it did, this is not the the scenario at the end because it was a quite demanding uh, program quite an effort and at the end we can see the difference the difference okay we still have from canada to australia we lost new zealand but we kept a lot of countries uh, we can see them in more detail in this table and uh, not counting with the the ones that are part of the consortium there were 46 uh, that gather a group of uh, 325 participants uh, in total, as has been said, uh, we uh, had uh, 1,371 euros that managed to achieve and to finish with success the, the, the MOOC. Uh, the, to finish with success, they had to uh, fulfill some requirements. They had to achieve 80% of all the activities and with a, an assessment rate of 80% also. So it was quite an effort. 
we can see that from the beginning till the end, we were losing some, <laughs> some, uh, uh, some of the, the, the ones that uh, showed interest, but we kept with a lot of people. In fact, we at the beginning, to be honest, we were hoping to have around 700 enrolled people and we ended up with 3,803. So quite an effort and quite a, a, a program that raised interest all over the world. Uh, according to what we has been said before, the digital uh, challenges and uh, the awareness of the lack of uh, uh, educational programs, especially in terms of long life uh, programs, raised a lot of interest and a lot of commitment from all of them. So, Talking about effort, it was quite a lot and poor heart sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it was a, a, a good, uh, well, a bad time to deal with the, the, the course. But this is a, a layout with the, the images that uh, many of you recognize from the Moodle platform that has been used as a learning environment uh, system. Those interactive images were linking for all the material that Panayota uh, mentioned, the contents that resulted from all the, the planning and validation methodology has previously been said. So the kind of distribution was three modules per week with the exception of week six and week seven. Uh, the, the distribution tended to to balance uh, the, the three categories of, of um, competences and all the effort. In fact, the, the expected eight weeks of the MOOC were uh, in real uh, 12 weeks because we had some delays, we had some breaks for some participants to keep up and also to, to, to rest. Uh, although they had been they had been uh, monitored and supported by many tutors, uh, the effort was quite a lot. And was it uh, worth it? Of course it was. It we were very pleased because remember they had to achieve 80% of activities and with a, an assessment rate of 80%, and many of them uh, achieved uh, uh, the majority. In fact, they achieved. 99 uh, between 95 and 99 percent which was quite good we were very proud and one percent achieved 100 percent of the of uh, all the activities and, and assessment rate so they are all to congratulate but we should not forget that many achieved 79 what is the difference so we don't forget all of them so we were quite demanding uh, defining that 80% uh, requirement, but many, many achieved very good assessment rates. So they are all to congratulate in terms of effort. And in terms of gender, uh, we know that they all started to, to, to help each other and it, we, we were very pleased about it, but we can in fact confirm and say that uh, museums and uh, this program was a, a, a female universe. So women lead the way, but at the end, we noticed that the rate of those who achieved with success uh, went down a bit. And that uh, raises a, a question related to the, all the commitments, all the tasks, the activities that women have and gather, considering all the, uh, the spheres they, they, they are uh, active, like professional, uh, family, personal, so a lot of work. So they are really brave. In terms of feedback, were they pleased with what we've learned? And I think they were, or we think they were. They answered some surveys and uh, most of them expressed their satisfaction 
not only uh, related to the learning environment with the, with the platform, but also with the tutoring they had, the support they had, and the uh, learning content that, was, that has been produced. Of course, they were also very pre pleased and they had reasons to, do, to, to, to be pleased with their own uh, personal uh, performance. So I think um, that is the important thing. That is our um, motive. We work for this. We work for the, the, the satisfaction of the learners. We work for the development of the professionals in order to move forward, in order to, in fact, improve the museum community and the well-being of the society because of them. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Paula. Thank you for taking us through this exciting world of MOOC uh, that indeed was spread uh, throughout the globe. Uh, we will move on now with the, with the program uh, as we are running uh, a little bit late behind the schedule. Uh, so after the MOOC, uh, Musa launched the blended training course that included professionalization and work-based learning courses that were attended over 70 learners in the three project countries in Greece, Italy and Portugal. Our next presenter will focus on the meaning of the course for the learners and the museum and cultural organizations that were involved in this process. What was the project's impact on its participants and what are the lessons museums can learn from this experience? Theodor Grassos from Acme, Greece, has more to share. Theodor, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for your um, introduction. Um, I'm Theodor Grassos from Acme, and uh, I'm going to make a presentation on the results and the impact of uh, the MUSA project, um, um, focusing in the specialization courses. So um, I'm going to start sharing my screen. Just a moment. Let's go somewhere. Are we okay now? We are all set. Thank you, Theodore. Okay. So, um, our discussion topics here are going to be first the structure of the MUSA specialization course, the impact that has been created, and finally, some of the main results that have been achieved. Um, the main areas of the specialization courses has, have been covered uh, before, they are also accessible. Um, at our web page um, of the uh, MUSA and um, are going to be accessible from there for whoever wants to have um, to attend uh, the specialization course. So what was the structure of the um, uh, course? We had three main areas, two areas of um, training the blended course, which included an online self study and face-to-face uh, -face trainings, the work-based learning area, and finally, we had the assessment um, on uh, both uh, sides. And I'm going to focus on them right now. So in terms of attendance, um, in Italy, we had initially 46 learners, but we will see some of the reasons we had a high number of dropouts, uh, mainly due to the COVID um, um, effect. In, Greek, in Greece, we started with uh, 33 and we had five dropouts. And finally, in our Portuguese learners have been 35 enrolled and um, we had the six dropouts. So approximately 26, 27 uh, learners attended the specialization courses in each of the three countries. So what have been the reasons um, of, for dropouts? Mainly it was workload. Um, people reported that due to the fact that some of them were also working at the same time or um, they also had some of uh, some other um, obligations, family and um, related 
um, things um, resulted to this low number, to be honest, of, of dropouts. Italy had a, a, a significantly higher number because um, this country, as we all know, unfortunately has been affected earlier um, by the implant, by uh, the COVID-19 and this had a, a negative result uh, to some uh, participants that um, had to drop the uh, course. And in Greece, three out of five uh, dropouts have reported that they had serious um, personal reasons for doing so. So we organized a train the trainer session, we organized the host organization session, and then we went into the um, um, training session for the learners. So each of those events, of those two events for the trainers and the hosting organizations has uh, lasted one day. And uh, the training has, of course, the trainings have been completed in all three countries so that um, everyone was ready in order to enter the classroom and deliver um, the courses to the learners. So the face-to-face -face meetings were really interesting because we gave the opportunity um, to um, help um, learners that had distance barriers, uh, barriers uh, to attend the meetings through um, Skype. So in every single um, um, training, there were a lot of uh, participants that have been attended through Skype because they were a little bit uh, far away from the uh, original area of uh, the implementation of the trainings. Um, this was also nice because we had the opportunity to meet uh, and cooperate together and exchange ideas during the implementation of the uh, trainings among the um, participating uh, learners which gave us also the opportunity to discuss about the different um, digitalization of uh, levels of the museums and so on. So how was the structure, the actual structure of the training? We had 24 hours of face-to-face -face trainings. We had um, 288 of online and self-study and 48 hours of assessment on the one hand. Um, digital virtual classes and self-study um, helped us to provide to the learners a lot of uh, um, notes and practical assignments with help, which helped the implementation of the training. And um, we saw that uh, the learners had a specific um, bond with the tutors in order to provide guidance so that um, the training objective could be achieved. Work-based learning had the structure of 200 hours of practical learning, uh, five hours of assessment, and um, the learning activities have been designed, uh, designed in cooperation with the Musa social partners, while um, suggested activities were also being uh, provided to the learners um, by the hosting organizations, museums, and uh, other cultural institutions. So a brief summary of the impact. Um, it will be only two slides in order to cut uh, the long story short and stay within the 10 minutes that I have available here. So um, we saw that there was a, that new train, new uh, staff and uh, the um, learners that have participated in the uh, trainings have um, transferred knowledge within the institutions that uh, they were actually um, either employed or doing the practical assignments, and they helped to integrate or to upgrade current um, different databases, which in some cases were in Excel files, um, in order to renew them and make them up to date and uh, more accessible by all the staff of the cultural organizations. We saw that um, the opportunity has, has been provided for a digital strategy in the hosting organizations through the support of our learners. Social media accounts have been opened and uh, have been become operational due to the participation of uh, the learners in the trainings. New IT approaches um, and methodologies within the museums have been um, um, have been uh, seen since some of the um, hosting organizations moved partially or 
um, holistically from paper to more digital solutions. Um, the training initiated and enhanced the introduction of virtual tools and management of the collections of some of the hosting organizations. And of course, um, they helped the organizations in order to optimize the day-to-day -day activities by incorporating IT tools into the daily life of the hosting organizations. On the other hand, um, existing ideas that were present have been formulated and have been uh, realized um, through the support of our uh, learners. Um, we have seen that digitalization within the institutions, within the hosting institutions has been promoted um, and reached all administrative levels. So not only the areas where the participants have been uh, employed, um, have been, let's say, um, yes, have, have implemented their world-based uh, training, but also in higher administrations, there was um, a discussion in order to see how the digitalization can be create an added value. Additionally, we saw that um, there has been a strong establishment of knowledge triangles. So educational providers started to work together with the hosting organizations, with museums, and of course, with public bodies. Um, here in Greece, this is uh, something extraordinary where we see that um, we started to um, change uh, knowledge and ideas and helped each other in order to foster digitalization in the areas of uh, museum and of, of museums and to provide better digital skills uh, to their uh, employees. Also, the creation of uh, digital versions, uh, pathways for the assisting um, of the accessibility for all types of visitors has been achieved through the um, implementation of um, our projects um, with the support of the learners. And um, the increased um, knowledge in using up-to-date applications we see today, um, some of the uh, participants started to use, maybe for the first time, Zoom application. Um, so it has been realized also. Um, there are four areas where we can summarize everything. Um, we see that the digitalization has been supported through skillful for, uh, uh, workforce that can be provided through the specialization courses we are providing um, through the MOSA project. And uh, we can meet the cultural strategic uh, plan for Europe uh, 2030. And finally, we see that for maybe for the first time, there is a wide range of stakeholders that work together um, in all different areas, starting from the hosting organizations and the museums and going to the educational providers, um, either universities or vet providers, um, and taking also into consideration institutional um, stakeholders, just like Ministry of uh, Ministries and so on. So um, closing, this is um, the last of the uh, slides I will show you. We can see some results, the, some main results we have um, identified. So the activities offered, um, the museum and cultural professionals with new skills and, profession and, and, and uh, competences, digital skills have emerged and have been provided. Uh, we see that learners have um, attended and um, have increased their digital skills. WBL activities were aligned to the hosting organization's priorities and strategic goals. We see that uh, skills acquired helped museum and uh, cultural professionals to respond in daily work and life challenges. And, we also have seen that there has been a strong and spontaneous community created among participants, as already stated before. And finally, most of the WBL projects have designed and implemented and during the implementation of their project seem to have a sustainability and are going to continue to be alive and there within the hosting organizations after the end of uh, the MUSA project. That's all. By me, I hope I covered the um, time I had. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye. Thank you very much, Theodor. Thank you for this very interesting presentation. And indeed, what we 
what we see is that the relevance of the Musa project is, is increasingly is increasing and it's probably becoming much more relevant now than it, it was uh, three years ago, three years and a half ago when we started, although the relevance was already uh, um, in, the, in the center at that time. Step-by-step uh, -step evaluation of the whole learning journey of the Musa was an important part of the project as it helped also to enhance and develop better experiences for the learners. We'll hear more about the evaluation from Massimiliano Di Bitonto, who is a PhD in computer science, a UX researcher, and an expert of human-computer interaction, Internet of Things, and digital fabrication. Massimiliano is a researcher at Link Campus University of Rome, and his main research topics are new interaction paradigms and the relation between humans and technology. Massimiliano, welcome, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I will uh, share my presentation. So I know that we are uh, a little bit late, so I try to be um, uh, brief and short as uh, some results have already been presented by uh, the other speaker. Uh, as uh, Link Campus University, we coordinated uh, uh, the evaluation uh, of the MUSA project and some activities are still ongoing as the uh, specialization course just ended 10, years, uh, 10 days ago and so we are still uh, collecting and evaluating data. Uh, but the um, uh, objective of the evaluation was to assess uh, each of the components of the VEC curriculum and its methodologies. Uh, to test it, validate it, and uh, um, of course uh, upgrade it uh, in order to improve the contents uh, and the um, process that we designed and developed. And so we focus on methodologies and tools, uh, on the MOOC, uh, on the specialization training, uh, uh, focusing on technical level, learning activities developed, learning outcome, outcomes uh, achieved, and of course uh, work-based learning, uh, and uh, at the end of those activities, we will also measure the impact. Uh, of course, we need some months after the end of the project to measure the overall impact that uh, uh, we have. But the evaluation uh, has an added value to promote the communication between partners, uh, stakeholders, students, employers, uh, external experts. Uh, as we have seen, that one of the added value of uh, uh, this project uh, in all it, part is uh, uh, to promote interaction uh, between uh, people uh, in the sector and outside the sector because uh, uh, of course we need to put uh, all the uh, people together in order to produce innovation and transformation. Uh, so we use a variety of tools and methodologies uh, as uh, uh, surveys uh, before and after the courses, uh, log analysis uh, using the platform, uh, uh, the learning platform that we use, uh, in direct interviews uh, with different subjects, uh, focus group, feedback from tutors, uh, and constant feedback from students. Uh, and so we were able also uh, to make adjustments uh, while the course was uh, going on, uh, as uh, of course it was a pilot version, and so uh, even we, we put uh, very good care uh, and attention in designing and developing the course. So, um, we, we had some little problem, technical problem or related to contents that we tried to fix. Uh, and so it was uh, like a, a work, a teamwork between us, the students uh, and uh, authors and so on. And we, use, we also used some methodologies like the quality reference framework and the template model for educational content just to be compliant uh, to uh, international standards and uh, uh, so for the evaluation of methodology of tools we are completing these activities uh, and the important thing is that uh, we are involving a panel of 30 experts 10 per country from university web providers museum operators and uh, i think this is uh, very important because uh, uh, it's um, uh, very important to have uh, an external eye, an external point of view on the work we did and if it's able to produce an impact, uh, to produce an added value uh, for the sector and for the community. 
And so the experts will, will, will be called to attend the webinar, to fill a questionnaire, to perform an heuristic usability evaluation, and then to um, participate to a focus group to discuss the most important topic. Um, about the evaluation of the MOOC, some results have already been presented, so I will be very short on that. Uh, we use uh, some uh, different tools. Uh, one thing that to me is uh, important uh, is to compare the initial expectation with the output of the uh, course. Uh, if we look at the initial expectation and needs, uh, we see that um, a student wants it to acquire new skill and knowledge uh, uh, mostly to um, be applied to um, use this new competency in the actual job, but also to get new job opportunities. And at the end of the course, uh, uh, we saw that the student deemed that uh, uh, the MOOC was um, uh, able to answer to their training needs, which is the majority of uh, the students agreeing on that. And uh, even if we had um, very high dropout rate, it's uh, um, also normal for this kind uh, of course. And so we see that in the three level of analysis, technical level, learning level, and learning outcomes level, we achieved good results, especially um, regarding the ability of the course to fit the initial needs and initial expectation. The, uh, uh, we were able also, uh, together with uh, Paola and with other uh, people involved, to um, uh, identify the strengths and the weakness of the single module and uh, producing guidelines uh, to improve all the material produced and the overall organization of the course. Then uh, we are still evaluating the specialization course because uh, uh, by now we still we have only log analysis interviews and feedback uh, from the tutor but we were able to um, identify some uh, reason for the dropout rates that are however lower compared uh, to the MOOC and uh, we think that the reason of this lower um, uh, dropout rate is the higher student commitment because uh, it's a specialization course so the students are, are highly motivated now uh, of course, in Italy, we are still investigating the reason of an higher dropout rate, uh, but uh, it's due, we think, to the difficulty of combining the course with work activities. As the specialization course was very demanding, as students know, as they had to do a course, attend to a course, do a, a working at a VBL, so a working activity. Uh, but we saw that uh, two weeks before the end of the course, uh, we were able to measure that. Uh, uh, the um, most uh, students uh, uh, completed more than 70% of the activities of the course. And we know that they need the 80% to be successful, so it, it's a good uh, uh, results. And we also uh, see that uh, analyzing the level of activity over time, we know this, that, uh, uh, that there is a constant interest and commitment on almost uh, uh, every module. And at the end, we are also uh, looking with interest at the work-based learning because in this part is the uh, part of the course in which the student have an impact on the sector. So we are measuring, uh, we are uh, measuring with the trainees uh, the, how they perceive the, how the, the learning outcomes that they have by the, this activity. Um, but uh, we are looking um, with interest uh, to their project, because as Theodore was saying, some of the project will continue inside the museum. Most of the case, we talked also with the employers, was the first time that a museum was uh, implementing a um, communication, a social media campaign, a digital strategy, and so on. So it was very interesting to measure the impact of the student inside the organization and if the, uh, this activity is able to continue and have a, a future development. So uh, I think I was in time, I have a minute left. So I, I want to thank because it was uh, uh, really um, uh, teamwork uh, that we did with the collaboration 
of uh, ACNI, University of uh, Portugal, uh, and uh, all the partners, of course. And uh, so we will publish the, the final results, of course, on the um, MUSA website, and we will be happy to share and use it as a base of discussion and improvement. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Massimiliano. Thank you. If every project entails a level of risk, transnational cooperation actions have that risk multiplied. The MUSA project adopted a strategy to assess the quality of the project that anchored the health of the partnership at its core. Ivo Osterbeck from Apadashi Deyash, who was leading on the quality assurance of the MUSA project, will tell us more about this process. Ivo works as project manager at MAPA, a Portuguese company that provides services in the field of culture. Ivo, the word is yours. Uh, thank you, Natalie. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to, to be here today to present the quality results of the project. Let me try to start this. Is it working? Perfect. Okay. Uh, so we've already uh, seen many of the results from the Musa, Musa project and many of the impacts that we've, we have seen and uh, some of the impacts we expect to see in the future of the, the project. Um, the project has been a very interesting experience for us at MAPA and it has been a, uh, an honor to work uh, among such excellent partners with whom we have been learning on a continuous basis. We want to thank all the people participating in the, the conference for the interest in the work of the project. And we would also like to make a special thank to all the people who have supported the project for the past three years in various dissemination actions, research activities, and especially the professionals that enrolled in the MOOC and the specialization courses of the profiles because their uh, continued participation has been very valuable and it's enabling us to validate the contents that we produced for, for all these years. Um, we have been interested in the digital shift of the museums for a, a while at Mapa das Ideias. We have been partners with the project leader, the Hellenic Open University for more than six years now, starting with the Equal Skills Project that first identified emerging digital job roles in the sector. Uh, so we kept with them in this uh, continuity project that transformed that early assessment, a change in the professional needs of a sector into a strategic response, the development of training curricula for these professionals. This multi-project strategy is a great way to enable the sector to consolidate experiences from different projects and enhance the out outcomes of the sector uh, uh, to the sector, sector at large so that uh, results from initial projects do not get lost in the main beneficiaries. Okay, uh, the, the role we took in the MUSA project was mostly related to the quality assessment of the project's management and the results. Our work was to monitor the progress of the implementation, but also to keep the, let's call, health of the partnership in focus, um, as well as the way the results are being delivered to the final beneficiaries, which are the museum professionals. Uh, the quality assessment of the project followed procedures defined in the shared document, which was the quality assurance and risk mitigation plan, which was updated throughout the project. The document defined the aims of the quality assessment, described the tools to do it, and identified the people tasked with this responsibility, which was a responsibility shared among all of the partners of the project through a quality team that was led by Mapa des Ideas, but included one person from each of the partner organizations, as well as an external evaluation that we provided uh, that well that an external expert provided at the middle of the project and will provide once again at the end um, so that we can have an independent perspective on our work um, most of the procedures that we took during the past three years have been internal and uh, uh, the evaluation of uh, the project meetings 
the assessment of the status of the project implementation and the monitoring of the project at six month periods. Uh, this was done mainly through internal surveys to all, to all, all uh, the partners and helped us understand what were at every uh, specific time the strengths and the weaknesses of the project. This also uh, uh, gave us a template to assess the quality of public actions by disseminating evaluation questionnaires to participants in MUSA events, uh, conferences and seminars as we will do today. These actions have allowed us to produce a collection of meeting reports and a collection of process evaluation reports, which are used for analysis by external evaluation and for overall appreciation in key evaluation moments, such as the middle of the project or the end. Beyond these regular assessments, quality assurance also integrates a, a risk mitigation plan, which was started at the end of um, uh, at the beginning of the project and su suffered uh, significant changes at the interim evaluation. These changes imply the adoption of a methodology by the Project Management Institute that organizes risk identification and assessment, as well as the, the proposal of corrective measures in a more structured way. Apart from these changes, we also introduced a steering committee group for the consortium that had regular online meetings every month since the end of the 2018 and resorted to a project management platform, the Basecamp tool, to create weekly checkups with the quality team members for the identification of new risks in three different categories. Uh, we mapped risks related to uh, costs, project costs or human resources, risks related to the quality of the deliverables or results of the project, and uh, risks related to the duration of activities or implementation of specific activities of the project. As it was clearly shown in previous presentations, the project produced a number of outcomes that went beyond expectations. The, these uh, graphics depict ve very little of the excessive outcomes that we, we've reached, not only in terms of results, but also in terms of uh, the process implementation. The research that built on the results of the equal skills helped redefine the professional roles. The training content uh, produced went for a total of 64 uh, competences, which were 20 more digital competences than those initially estimated. The training programs also delivered beyond their expectation, particularly the MOOC. While these outcomes are great, they imply that there was a largely unexpected effort required from all those of us involved in the project. If uh, uh, you were a MOOC or specialization course trainee, you know this as well as we do, as part of this effort was also yours. Because of this, implementation delays were a common issue throughout the project. As we foresaw from uh, these delays from an early uh, stage, the consortium was able to request an European, uh, the European Commission for an extension of the project for six months in order to be able to fully deliver the, the training programs as we are at this stage. With this extension, the partners assumed onto themselves the exceeding work and developed even more contents than was needed for the completion of the funded action. Because of this, while most of the alumni of the MUSA courses can now have their weekends off, most of the partners are still working very hard, updating materials and adapting them for third party usage, uh, materials such as open educational resources. This extra work is engaged by all under the belief that these resources can serve the museum sector at large, even beyond the scope of the project. So I would take this opportunity to thank all the people involved in this uh, very, very hard task, especially those which were not meant to be developing content or other resources or other resources and ended up doing this going above and beyond to help us finish this project. What? I don't know what happened.
I seem okay. Um, while the delays in production kept many of us anxious throughout the project, two things helped balance and counter that anxiety. So just to finish, I just want to uh, say that uh, we understand that the delays result in very great uh, uh, part from decisions that were taken for the benefit of the trainers, the trainees and the sector. And uh, uh, I also want to say that uh, the supportive and collaborative attitude of all the partners of the project who were relent relentless and tireless in helping resolve issues that appeared at night and on weekends and even during vacation times uh, have been a very, very important contribution to everything we've seen. Uh, so we, at the end of the project, we will leave the, the sector with a number of new resources that practitioners across Europe can choose to use uh, for their benefit. Uh, four different profiles that can help museums organize themselves to upskill professionals and help them take the, the most uh, from the digital transition. Universities and v VET providers can take resources and provide training in these profiles, shaping the way museums across Europe operate in the dig digital sphere. And uh, professionals can even use them, uh, these materials for self-teaching pur purposes. Uh, I'm going to finish here. Thank you very much for your attention. You can find more about the project uh, or Mapa das Ideias if the link's displayed on this slide. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ivo. Uh, and thanks to all the speakers who shared the success and insights of the MOSA project with us and with the uh, uh, over 450 attendees that we have uh, with us right now. Uh, we are running um, out of time, but I propose that we take two questions from the audience. Uh, some of the questions have been directly answered live in written in questions and answer session, just to make sure that we cover as many questions as possible. Uh, I want to take one question that is coming, which is recurrent, and uh, many of the participants have been asking if they should, if there will be another MOOC program in the near future organized, uh, and if, if, if that is something that the project is planning. Achilles, maybe you want to take this question. Uh, I guess, Natalie, thank you. I've already answered this to the people who posted in on Q&A, but I will say it also now for the benefit of uh, the entire audience. Uh, we plan to offer the MOOC uh, once per year. This is our initial plan. Uh, let's see how it works out. We are planning uh, to offer it um, within this year as well. Uh, but first, we'll have to close the project now. So you have, please excuse us for uh, not doing this immediately. But uh, uh, the situation now requires that we focus our efforts on, on closing the project, which officially ends end of April. Then once we are uh, beyond this <coughs> milestone, uh, we will consider in which way and when during the year we will uh, offer the MOOC again. Um, taking this opportunity, uh, I'd like to thank uh, all of the participants uh, who stayed with us through this uh, first part of the, of the event. Um, at some point I saw we had about 500 people uh, joined. Uh, this is a really, really uh, uh, encouraging number. Uh, it means that there is a community out there who uh, wants to know more about, who needs what we have done in this project. And I have, I would like to assure this community that we will uh, stand beyond them, uh, behind, sorry, next to them. We will uh, support them, support this community. We are members of this community. We are working with you and uh, we'll do the best we can since you like what we have produced in this project, we'll do the best we can to uh, continue offering uh, the project outcomes. Thank you, Achilles. Thank you very much. Don't miss, ahead we'll have an exciting panel discussion with the experts from the museum sector discussing the future of museum professionals in the digital era.